Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to another, another Webinar Wednesday hosted by Cal State Bakersfield Small Business Development Center. I'm Kelly Bearden. I'm the director of the center and your host today for Webinar Wednesday number 320. That's 320 episodes going back to January of 2013. Got a great program today, got some wonderful lender. Many of you have heard the name Lindustry before. We'll even talk maybe a little bit about that. But before we bring our special guest out, let's go over just a couple of things real quick. And, and so what is up today on June 12th, 2024? Well, today we're going to get into a lot of different funding options. We're going to get into a lot of programs that are out there. And our special guests will discuss many of these programs that are available through Lindustry. And mentioned a little tease on Lindustry before. Many of you remember back to the California, the California uh, Relief Grant, going back to December of 2020, the $515,000, $25,000 grants. Many of you got acquainted with Lindustry at that time. And we'll get into a lot of the programs that they have as being a certified development financial institution, a community certified development institution, a CDFI. We'll also give you an update in a few moments on the beneficial ownership filing requirement. It's that filing requirement that the U.S. government has on a particular website where you are to go in and put in your business information, your business ownership information, and other contact information. There are certain requirements for whenever you actually, um, whenever actually you initiated your LLC or your incorporation. And we'll get into that in a couple of minutes. A little bit of economic news on the economic corner front. A little bit better news on inflation today for May. Uh, our capital quarter segment, which is a regular on Webinar Wednesday, has got you covered twice. We've got you covered with our special guest today. And also, we also have an event info coming up that we will be discussing. As always, we will take your questions. Your questions, please go to the Q&A box. In the Q&A box, what you can do is you can put your question for today, and we will be answering those at the conclusion of our presenter's presentation. So go to the Q&A box. Other messages that you might have, you can put into the chat. Our producer, Maureen busher Dang, will be working in the background. She'll be working the chat and a couple of other things. And as our normal, not always, but normal, we will have a poll. So let's go to our poll for today. And uh, got a couple of questions on the polls for today. And we're going to start with just a little bit of information from those of you that are out there that'll help for today's presentation. And so we'll start with essentially, you know, this question right here. If you're seeking funding, like I think many of you are, how much ideally do you need? So we're looking for the dollar amount. Is it less than 25,000? 25 to 100,000? 100,000 to 500,000 or over one half a million dollars? So we're basically looking today for, you know, just the size. The size really, you know, indicates uh, what program might work best for you. And there's a lot of different funding programs and they are predicated on lending amounts. So our first question of the day, our first poll question is, if you're seeking funding, ideally, how much do you need? And you notice I ask how much do you need, not how much do you want? So two different things. But uh, how much ideally do you need to get your business either started, growing, expanding, or some other means? And we do have 53% of you participating. Uh, hoping for a few more of you to jump in and maybe uh, before we close this particular poll. Are you looking for under 25, 25 to 100, 100 to 500,000, or over 500,000? And with that, and 60% of you participating, we are going to conclude the poll and end the poll at this time and share the results with everybody. And half of you, one half, 50% are in that 25 to $100,000 range. We have 28% of you that are looking for 100,000 to 500,000, 17% uh, under 25 or under, 
and uh, just 6% over 500,000. So thank you so much for poll question number one. And moving to our second poll question of the day. And that is going to be the type of funding that you're looking most realistic on using. So um, what type of funding is most realistic for your venture? And is it going to be, number one, is it going to be debt, which is a repayable loan? Is it going to be some form of equity or investment, such as angel funding or an investor in your particular business? Is it going to be uh, hopefully a grant or non-refundable grant funds? A little harder these days. Uh, likely we see a lot of small business innovation research grants. We have a city of Bakersfield grant program. So there's still some hanging out there or other. Uh, other things might be partnerships. It could be crowdfunding, et cetera, or any other way that you could fund your business out of all these opportunities. So again, we're just looking kind of for the most realistic way for you to fund your venture. Is it through debt? Is it through equity, you know, investment? Is it through grant or other non-repayable funds or other? And we do have 54% of you participating at this time. I'm going to give you one last moment to jump in and get your poll question answered. And uh, with that, let's bring it to an end and let's share the results. And the results say that 47% of you would prefer it to be in a grant fund. Um, again, a little harder these days, but 32% are looking for a loan be a, uh, through, the, through debt, either equity or some other type of investment, 16%, and other 5%. Thank you. And after enduring two uh, polls, let's get into something possibly, possibly a little bit more fun. And that would be our final poll question, which is, as many of you know, is uh, it's the weekend for the U.S. Open, concluding on Father's Day on, uh, on Sunday. Happy Father's Day in advance. So the, our question today is going to be dealing with the U.S. Golf Championship. And what we want to ask is a question and the question is, which pro golfer is highest paid? And this, I'll give you a little, a little uh, hint here. It's both on and off the course. So according to Forbes.com, which golfer is the highest paid? Is it John Rahm, Roy McElroy, Roy McElroy, excuse me, or Tiger Woods? So on and off the golf course, you know, and golf has been kind of uh, those that don't follow the sport much, but with the, uh, the Professional Golfers Association, the PGA, and then the all upstart uh, Saudi league called Live. Live's been throwing a lot of money out there. I don't really, you know, need to say more than that. But um, on this particular poll question, who is highest paid on and off the golf course? John Rahm. Roy McElroy or Tiger Woods. And with 57% of you participating, let's end the poll and, uh, oh gosh, I stumped you. My bad, huh? 68% of you say Tiger Woods and I, um, I very well might have said Tiger Woods. 21% Roy McElroy, Roy McElroy. Um, boy, being Irish, you know, I'm having a hard time saying an Irish name today. And then also uh, John Rahm with just 11% was the correct answer as he signed a, a deal to go to the live golf circuit. And apparently that made him the highest paid golfer according to Forbes.com. So a little primer for today, for this weekend's uh, US golf. So thank you for participating in all three poll questions. And we will stop sharing and actually move along now. So uh, one thing that we definitely want to continue talking about, and that is a lot of the things that are going on, and a lot of things going on are happening, you know, not only for our particular center here, but also as part of our economic corner. And so 
our economic corner, a little slice of the economy, and in lieu of our uh, absent, you know, uh, webinar Wednesday uh, house economist, we will give you our best version of what is the economic news of the day. And that is basically the Fed officials today announced that they do project one rate cut in interest rates for 2024. Well, that's certainly a step in the right direction. You know, they had a report today that inflation dropped to 3.3% in May. And although they continually want to keep that inflation rate under 2%, uh, hearing a rate cut is really pleasant news for especially a lot of those that are already in existing variable late rate loans, such as SBA loans. Uh, which many uh, people are telling me and telling me frequently uh, what the interest rate is for those particular products now that they have uh, had a run-up in interest rates. So what we had been looking at was that firmer than inflation earlier in the quarter likely had postponed rates. But today, the Fed Reserve, the Federal Reserve Bank officials announced that in 2024, it is likely that there could be a rate cut. Um, so those rates have been holding steadier than, the, than hopefully longer, but they've been holding and pushing up rates in order to hopefully curb inflation. And that is our economic corner for today. Our capital quarter, uh, we'll be getting into that with a real heavy dose when we find out what is going on with Lindustry and a lot of the programs that they have now. Uh, and also we have news that our capital summit, our Eastern Sierra Capital Summit is happening. And it's great to be able to report that the Capital Summit will be live on Friday, June the 28th. It'll be uh, two ways to join, two ways to participate in the Capital Summit. And one is to actually register to attend it live. It will be held uh, in Mammoth Lakes this year. Usually we switch back and forth from Mammoth to Bishop with the Eastern Sierra Capital Summit this year in Mammoth. And that will be on Friday, June 28th from 8 a.m., 8.30 a.m. till 12 p.m. at the West End Menage Resort in Mammoth Lakes. So are you, those that are familiar with the Capital Summit, you know that we will have numerous speakers and all, lots of opportunities. Typically, we talk about programs that will run from $5,000 uh, $5, up to $10 million. We talk about equity programs from angels to underserved venture capital platforms alternative uses of funds such as uh, fintech and harder money and uh, equipment leasing, a lot of different micro loan lending programs and credit score based programs, lots of things. Uh, we like to say that there are dozens of programs that we'll be going through. For those of you that cannot be live in Mammoth Lakes, it will be on also available on Zoom as we do, we like to call our simulcast, and actually uh, have the hybrid event that will be both live in person and in Zoom. So two ways to sign up, either in person or on the Zoom call. So that is coming up in just a couple of weeks. You know, we've been talking a lot this last uh, probably about eight months or so before the year even started on the beneficial ownership information, that filing that must be done if you are particularly a uh, LLC, if you're even a nonprofit, you could run into if you have a for-profit entity within that nonprofit. If you're an LLC, an incorporation, either C or S corp, uh, some forms might also need done if you are in a uh, limited partnership and some of the other partnership arrangements. Uh, it's best to contact your uh, financial professional, your legal professional, if you are unsure. We'll try to provide you some of the information, but it is an information report in uh, the FinCEN website. And the FinCEN is a financial crimes enforcement network. This is designed to uh, get some of the bad actors out there that are using a lot of these corporate entities uh, for uh, items that aren't really the good for everybody. And so what is the latest on the BOI, the beneficial ownership information? is a few months ago, we had a court that ruled that the uh, Corporate Transparency Act is unconstitutional, whereas that has yet to been overturned. It seems like only about 65,000 of the 20 million people who will need to do this filing or 20 million entities that need to be filed for uh, are actually can use that um, 
use that designation as far as unconstitutional to avoid filing. So we really break this down into when the company came into existence. If it was before 2024, you have until January the 1st of 2025 to file the report. Uh, many people are waiting till later to file the reports to see what happens with pending litigations and other factors. This has been one of those programs that has been um, one that has had a lot of changes to it as it's been rolling along. And uh, for those that really were formed in 2024, so if you formed an LLC since January 2024, you don't have that luxury. You can't afford to wait. You must file within 90 days of filing your articles of incorporation, organization, or similar documents with the Secretary of State. So to do that, uh, you really need to go to that particular website and look for more. You can check our chat to find the link to in order to get to the particular website. Some of the other information on this is New York State has adopted their own rules in their own state. Now, not too many businesses in California um, actually have formed LLCs in New York, but you know sometimes they're registered to do business in New York and you still have to do that there as well. The civil penalty increased from $500 a day to $591 for, of course, what other reason? Inflation. So it's apparently the penalty that for the CTA violations are tied to inflation. So now it's $591 per day, which if you just fail to do that for a particular month, you're looking at going up from $15,000 a month potentially now to seventeen seven. dollars So it's real clear that the, the punitive penalties are rather stiff. Uh, FinCEN has made it clear that they will not take enforcement action against violations of, of that commit inadvertent errors. They won't result in penalties. So Keep this in mind, particularly those of you that have filed uh, for a LLC or other uh, form of entity that you need to do this report. A lot of uh, tools here at the SBDC to help you even after today's webinar. One of our favorites is Live Plan, and uh, we do have our YouTube channel. We'll talk a little bit about those right now. We'd love to get your feedback as always for after today's webinar. So take a moment or two and and uh, jump into today's survey when we're done and give us your comments and your feedback. You can go to our Google page and uh, please leave uh, some positive feedback if you have a great experience. You can contact me at any time if you have anything negative to talk about or anything uh, good or bad, I don't, I don't care. Um, we will get a res resolution or we'll get something fixed right away. Our YouTube channel is up to 417 subscribers. Thank you for uh, knowing that uh, that your webinar Wednesday will drop in there sometime probably this weekend. So from today, uh, this, if you want to watch it again, it'll be in the YouTube channel. Uh, we will also send you more notifications or an email that provides information on how you can watch that. Currently, we're around 270 videos in there. Some of the ones that are in there that are trending is we have uh, uh, our live AI, live planned with AI. So it's the live pan plan with Josh Beagles, uh, about 496 views from just a few months ago. Our City of Bakersfield grant program has over 500 views for the multiple programs we've done on that. Some that are a little underappreciated, I believe, our business turnaround strategies, nearly 100. Generational transitioning for those businesses that are looking to maybe transition out, maybe business owners transition out and let the next generation take over. Also, our new labor laws 2024 from just a few months, so about four months ago, 164 views. And maybe it's time to look at that with the state of California, generally passing labor laws at midterms here that take effect July 1st. We'll look into that and bring Celeste Joan Ramos back if that's the case. And if you want to talk about underappreciated cash flow resources with cash flow, Mike Malone, our webinar, our 300th webinar from just 20 webinars ago uh, is doing great uh, or could be doing great, but only 41 views. And with that, uh, if you want to see a live presentation, a live presentation is coming up next Tuesday on June the 18th. 
sponsored by all of your SPDCs in the San Joaquin Valley and also the Central Coast and Eastern Sierra regions. I told you where they're all located earlier, so I won't do that again. But cash flow, Mike, really some great content. And you know, here at the CSUB SPDC, we're really big on cash flow. And really, it's such a uh, it's such an outstanding program. It'll be again live next Tuesday, June eighteenth. Registration information is there on your screen, or it'll actually end up in the chat. Contact us if you have anything you want to discuss on any kind of topic. I'm running long. I'm sorry. So it's time to bring in Bruno, and it's time to bring in Bruno Chaccarelli. 34-year veteran of financial service industry. He is the senior managing director. He's not Bruno Ceccarelli Sr. He's Bruno Ceccarelli, the senior managing director and regional executive for experience at Lindustry. Uh, I told you about, uh, we just looked at our YouTube shares. We did back when uh, Lindustry did the California relief grant back in December, started in 2020. We did a a little brief webinar on that that had literally nearly 3,000 views. Obviously, a program many of you took care of and really took great uh, 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 satisfaction in the great job that Lindustry did statewide in that program. But there's so much more, and that is what Bruno's here to talk about. So, Bruno, come on in and take it away. All right. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Kelly. And uh, I appreciate everyone's time today. Um, let's see here. We're going to cut over to my screen. And um, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today and share a little bit about Lindustry, uh, what we do with uh, business owners and what we do in the community. Uh, as you heard from uh, Kelly, uh, you mentioned it a couple of times, and I will just repeat it. Um, the SBDC program and the organization itself is a wonderful and valuable resource for all types of businesses, not just those that are starting out, but those that are up and running. They act as a wonderful team of just consultants and uh, assistance to you to sometimes, uh, almost like therapists, look at you from the outside, ask you meaningful questions, ask you the tough questions that sometimes the people around you won't. So please use them as a resource. They have a lot of wonderful, uh, wonderful tools. Uh, I'll tell you for me personally, my parents uh, have been small business owners since the 1970s. My dad is 89, my mom is 88. Trust me, generational planning and transitional planning for a business is critical. Not just when you're in your 80s. Think about your life planning and the stages that you're in. It could be something critical for you to know early on. So again, if I could, uh, if I could give you one little tidbit of advice other than how great it is to be at Lendistry, it is uh, a wonderful the SBDC program. You know, today we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Lendistry, a little bit about what we do and how we do it, and um, uh, a little bit about the products that we offer in the community, along with other state programs that are available, some of the qualifying criteria, uh, some of the analysis tools that we use. Um, again, with 34 years in financial services and sales, I have the opportunity to again, give you some some guidance on what we look for and when we approve loans. And at the end, some contact information. Now, uh, before we get into a lot of those details, I'd like to turn it over to uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Oliver Arduna, to kind of give us a little bit of an overview of Lendistry as a company, uh, where we came from and where we're going. Oliver, I'll turn, give it over to you. Hi, everyone. I work on Bruno's team. I mainly support him in analytics and sales reporting. It's such a pleasure to be here and to tell you a little bit about Lendistry is that we are a tech-enabled minority-led community development financial institution, or CDFI, I will throw that acronym around. Um, we work with the federal, state, and local government and other entities and partners like the SBDC um, to get funding back into the communities that we serve. Uh, we're not a traditional or regular bank. However, most, if not all, our team does have background in banking and finance and experience at large financial institutions. And we don't just create or open up the avenues to get funding, but we also make the system and process a lot more understandable, easier, efficient for these underserved communities. And we make it efficient, through, not just with our experienced team, but also through our technology and our process and day to day. And we implement technology not only to make the process on ourselves and our team easier, but most importantly, to make the job and life of our customers more efficient and faster. 
And with the stress of running a small business, the last thing that they need to worry about is being able to fund their dream and access, accessing loans. We were able to help over 600,000 small businesses throughout the Lendistry lifetime with our tech and team and help fund not just their businesses, but their dream and livelihood. And as a CDFI, we, are, we do have a presence in almost all 50 states with established and cemented state partnerships in the dark purple and in the lavender. Um, we have almost, we do have a presence, but it's almost established. Um, our orange dots are our office locations. And unfortunately we have not reached the states in gray, but we do hope to start those conversations as soon as possible. We are nationwide because underserved communities are not just located to one region or limited to one state, but they are everywhere. And per our mission, we want to establish a presence and outreach to as many places in order to help these small business owners. And while we did start in 2015 and became a CDFI in 2016, became an SBA preferred lender in 2017, we made our mark through COVID, through PPP loans, which we almost did $4 billion in, and through the grant programs, which we did $4.5 billion. And overall, we should achieve about $10 billion by the end of 2024. And our impact wasn't just on the owners themselves, but on their employees, $2 million to be exact. And here at Lendistry, we don't just want to help the owners, but also have a helpful impact on the networks of people around them. And with that, I hope you learned more about Lendistry and what we stand for and the goals. And I'll turn it over to Bruno to talk about our products. Uh, our, our products really kind of uh, break down into some of these general categories that you see in the, uh, on the screen in front of you. Uh, what we would refer to as core, and you see in the upper left-hand corner, is really a conventional business term loan. Oh, Kelly had the question early uh, on regarding, you, know, you want a loan, an angel investor, a grant. Lendistry does have its own unit that does grants for both California and a number of different states. So I always encourage business owners, always visit Lendistry.com. You can select the state that you're in, in our case, California, and it'll tell you if there's any other um, available grants that we are working on. So every few months, just check in, see what's going on, because sometimes they just pop out uh, out of nowhere and you can see what is happening. But on the core business term loan side, those are regular loans, either with a three-year to five-year amortization, we start at $25,000, they go as high as $5 million, typically unsecured with just your own personal word and uh, you know uh, personal guarantee. Second, and next to that, we have what we call the non-revolving line of credit. This, it would be a line of credit in which we give you a certain amount of money that's available to be drawn upon for a period of time, 6, 12, 18, or 24 months. At the end of that drawdown period, we then term it out for three to five years. This is typically something you would use for, like if you're doing some sort of project. Some people think of it as like tenant improvements in a new building. Uh, other people look at uh, you have a you have a large contract and you're going to be looking at making payments along the way. So instead of giving you all the money up front, which would then be amortized over the full life of the uh, of the window of that loan, we set up this amount that you can draw upon as you need, and then it is turned out. As Oliver mentioned, as uh, an SBA preferred lender, we have the full seven eight program as uh, as well as a five hundred four program. So we can do both uh, working capital credits, as well as uh, real estate funding under the SBA. We are part of the Small Business Loan Fund in which we uh, participate in a product called a new market tax credit. If you're looking to invest in a real estate facility for your business or even an investment property, as long as it falls within specific uh, criteria around maybe a census tract or a special zone, we have the opportunity to see if it qualifies under this special tax allotment and uh, it can underwrite those types of credits. We also do specialty lending. For example, airport concession is a very large opportunity for us. Let's say you, you run a restaurant and you'd like to open a, a, a new location in an airport. It doesn't have to be here in the Central Valley of California. It could be at LAX, it could be Southern, Northern California, it could be in another state. We can set up a, a joint venture with some of the major partners across the country. And this gives you an entryway into, uh, into that line of business. They are always looking for small business partners, partners with diverse backgrounds, or partners with a unique product that can be sold through a, an airport location. We also do not, not only owner-occupied real estate, as I mentioned through the SBA program, but also a conventional program, both owner-occupied as well as investor and multifamily. So uh, 
if uh, you go to a traditional bank, as I worked for for many decades, uh, you, you know, uh, we would look for you as owner occupied to use the majority of the property. Let's say you come across a piece of property that's very valuable. You can use it. But you can also expand it. These are the kinds of lending yeah, that we do. The, and as a CDFI, we're a little bit different than a bank. We have some different requirements. We are regulated differently, and we have access to funds from different programs. Some of the funds that we use come from gov uh, federal government agencies. Some come from state or local municipalities. But we also work with private companies that are looking to invest in different communities to help grow. And as I was telling Kelly, Kelly earlier, uh, I was born and raised in San Francisco. I see the impact of what happens to a community when you have, you know, boarded up storefronts and businesses leave. You know, hopefully, uh, the work that we do at Lendistry, in partnership with the uh, the SBDCs, helps bring those needed funds back into communities, open up those businesses, bring back jobs. And when you bring back business, you bring back jobs in the community. Communities grow and they and they flourish. We also have our own product on the contractor side and purchase order financing. And this is especially important, you know, in today's organization. Look, you know, I haven't been in an airport that's not under construction. I, I don't see many freeways that don't have some kind of work to be done. And they are looking to expand the number of vendors that they're, that these municipalities and organizations like Caltrans uh, are looking to, to work with. So um, if you can offer the opportunity to work with some of these large vendors and you get a contract, guess what happens? You're gonna start you know, uh, gathering materials. You're gonna start hiring. You need equipment, but you might not get your first payment or the first progress payment for three, six or nine months down the road. But your people want to get paid this Friday. Based off of that contract, we can analyze it, advance a certain amount of money off of that contract and use that contract as a collateral. And then what we do is, uh, for example, if you had a $3 million contract, we would advance on average 30%, like a million dollars. If it's a two-year contract that's going to pay you quarterly, that would be eight payments. We would take the money we advance, amortize it over the eight payments. So when you get paid, we will take our portion of that amount and then we move on. So uh, if you are doing contractor work or you have purchase orders with the municipality or a federal agency, we can advance money off of that for you as well. And then the last part that we do is as a FinTech, uh, we use a lot of analytics and use what we call the smart scoring technology. Again, going back to uh, to Kelly's, I think, first question, how much money are you looking for? It might have been the second question. Uh, and I promise uh, we did not uh, work together to figure out uh, asking these questions. But the majority of people said, you know, twenty five to one hundred thousand dollars. Our smart scoring technology works with 25,000 up to 150,000. You go to lendistry.com, uh, you register, you upload the required documents that we're going to talk about shortly, and then uh, it, it goes through our process. As long as we have everything ready to go, we had a case a couple of weeks ago, customer applied on Monday, they were approved on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday morning, they signed their documents on Thursday, and they were funded uh, the following Monday morning. Uh, for $150,000. So, you know, one piece of advice I would tell you is as we go through the process, please make sure you have everything ready to go, but we're going to talk a little bit more about it. Um, I have a couple of, of slides here that are going to be very busy. We've got a lot of information on here, and this is what a lot of our people really work with you on. As a fintech, you think, well, you guys are virtual, computer-based, you know, you just follow formulas. Well, we really don't. You're going to see that we have people behind the formulas and the formulas are built off the back of the information from the people so these are some of the factors that we look for what's your fico score have you been in business greater than or less than two years um you know it, have you had a bankruptcy in the last uh, five to seven years you know what is your debt service coverage these are all factors that we look at uh, as we go through the different products that we sell both on the sba side that you see on the screen here as well as the conventional side that I mentioned earlier. The terms of our loans go from three to five years in the traditional lower end uh, that you, uh, a lot of you had selected earlier in the 25 to 100, 150,000 uh, range, but also can go as high as 10 years with a 25 year amortization when it comes to real estate.
Uh, one thing that's really important, especially here in California, is what we call the SSBCI program, the State Small Business Credit Initiative. Uh, uh, this was a, a program that had been established a number of years ago, but more recently, you might have heard about it through the American Rescue Plan, where $10 billion of federal funds was set aside through the U.S. Treasury. Each individual state was uh, asked to put together their own individual program of what they wanted to do to get a certain allotment of money out. They tell institutions like ours what they are looking for. And then we work with SBDCs, for example, to say this is what customers are looking, this is what the state's looking for. As they not if they match this criteria, we can do different things. Things like a lower FICO score, a higher debt to income ratio is acceptable. So there's a number of credit enhancements that we work through through the US Treasury to make sure that small businesses are funded along the way. Right now, as you saw earlier, we have a number of states in purple that we are working currently with uh, with the individual states on. Every state's a little different. So what a rule in California might be different than Colorado. Uh, the green states are approved and coming online. And where you see these orange circles are new states that we will have up and running over you know, the next couple of months. In terms of process, when you go to lendistry.com, you're gonna see a document like this. This is what we call the MRD because in a bank, we're almost like a government. We have an acronym for everything. So this is our minimum required documents. This is what we need to help make a decision. So as you see here in the 25,000 and up category, your most three years of uh, tax returns. For SBA products, we really look at two years, but for almost all of our other products, we'll ask for three. So we just ask for three upfront together with your personal taxes. Some cases of a small business owner or sole proprietor, your business taxes are your personal taxes. That's perfect. Um, along the way, any business licenses that you have to operate your business together with copies of your ID, because while we are a FinTech, things like uh, the KYC, know your customer, uh, you know, anti-money laundering rules still apply. So we need to make sure you are who you say you are and you're the person that runs that business. We also want to make sure that we verify any liquid assets you have. So we want to make sure that we tie it to your bank account and we use technology to verify all this information. You don't need to submit any statements unless your, your financial institution is not part of the electronic network. Most of the major banks, uh, regional banks, and smaller community banks are, certain credit unions sometimes aren't. But if they're not in the system, we'll collect statements. If they are, that's very easy to do. And then anything else that you think might be uh, useful to help us make a decision. For example, right now, here we are, uh, middle of June. It's almost Father's Day, you know, the uh, US Open weekend. So you might be five and a half months into your fiscal year if your year ended 12-31-2023. Well, let's say that you had a fantastic, you know, COVID hit, 2020 was bad. 21, you started getting better. 22 is really good. 23 is even better. Your interim financials for 24 are outstanding. Submit those. That tells the story. We need to understand your business to help you, to help come up with the right financial products for you. And on the bottom of the screen, for general working capital, if it's between 25,000 up to about 150,000, that's all that we need. We can make a decision with that information. But if you want something over 150, once again, go back to Kelly showing his genius. You know, what are you going to use the money for? Is it a business acquisition? Is it tenant improvements? Is it business debt refinance or a commercial real estate purchase? Based on the criteria, the category of what you're looking for, we could ask for additional uh, documentation along the way. To help our partners like the SBDCs, we design different analytical tools, like the tool you see in front of you right now. This is something our partners use internally when working with business owners directly, but it has really those core questions. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was working with a company in Nevada. It's about $500 million in annual revenue. The following day, I was working with a customer in Arizona. It's 175,000 in annual sales. You might think, what do those two companies have in common? What they have in common is I ask them the same six questions. How do you make money? How do you spend your money? And what do you do with the difference? 
that difference is the cash flow that we were talking about earlier. And that's what you really see here in front of you right now. The additional questions are, how much money do you need? Uh, here's, a, here's a red flag for any lender. If you tell a lender, oops, excuse me. If you tell a lender, hey, I, I'll take whatever you give me, or what do I qualify for? Big red flag. What do you need the money for? How much money do you need? What are you going to use it for? And what's the game plan to pay us back? And when you see these questions here in front of you, these are also additional questions that we look for um, when analyzing okay. your credit package. What's your credit score? Credit score is a historical number that says, how have you managed your, your, uh, your debts in the past? Do you have any delinquencies? Delinquencies are, are a way of life. It happens. Those are accidents. Do you have zero, one or two, three or four? more than six or eight. Those are the kinds of questions that we ask. And as we ask them, additional questions kind of move on from there. How long have you, know, have you declared bankruptcy in the last five years? If it's yes, there's gonna be other issues that we're gonna to want to address in the credit package. If it's no, wonderful. How long have you owned the business? If you've owned it less than two years versus over five years, outstanding. Now we have the ability to calculate a track record and a progression of what you're doing. Um, what's your estimate? Have you been profitable two out of the last three years? If you haven't been profitable, again, working with an SBDC to help identify what are areas that we can work on to change that profitability. Going back to those first three questions, how do you make money, how do you spend money, and what do you do with the difference? What state are you located in? These are those SSBCI states that could have a credit enhancement because of a government agreement. Are you over the age of 18? You'd be surprised how many people under the age of 18 actually go onto our site and apply for credit. So we ask the question. But then you look at the right side, we look at general interest rates, a term to actually calculate the monthly payment for you right up front. It's, it's really important for us to make sure that we are very transparent in our process. Every product that we have, you will see what's your payment, what is the APR, so you know how much the money is costing to get it to you. If you add in your annual revenue, your annual expenses, we do a very quick calculation on cash flow, pre-payment and post-payment. So by putting all of this together, um, and we can realistically do a lot of these things within seconds if we have the right information, hopefully we A, as Oliver mentioned, as a business owner, you have a lot of things to worry about, a lot of responsibility on your back, but you can then take the responsibility of additional financing and not worry about that and put it off on the side. With the right information, we can help make the right decision. Uh, our partner that works with our SBDCs and works in the Central Valley is Uriel. He had a conflict today, so they called in the B team, which is Bruno and Oliver. But you can always reach out to connect with uh, Uriel directly. We have his email as well as his direct phone number. As always, uh, lendstreet.com is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can either go in, register, apply. Um, when you see the apply now button and you click on it, you also have access to a video or a PDF that will walk you through the entire application uh, process. So there are there's never any surprises. Or if you'd like to apply and you go to lendistry.com slash Uriel Aguelas, um, Uriel is able to see your application through the process. If you ever have any questions, you know, he can work with you directly one on one. Uh, with that, I'd like to say thank you again to Kelly and Maureen for your hospitality. And uh, again, SBDCs, fantastic program. Please use them. And I'll open it up to, uh, to any questions that, uh, that you guys have. Well, let's get into your questions and see what we got out there. If you have any questions for Bruno, go to the Q&A and pop it in there and we'll get to it right away. We do have one question. And it is, are franchises eligible, specifically new built hotels? Uh, we are currently working on a uh, hospitality program that would uh, encompass hotels as well as restaurants. We are testing out a new product right now. So uh, if you are looking for some financing in the next one to two months and you'd like to be a guinea pig, please let me know. Uh, otherwise... It's a funny way to say that, but as we roll out new products, we try to find customers to say, okay, this is new. I wanna watch how you go through the process. So uh, if 
if it's something that you'd be interested in working with us, I'd be happy to have a conversation with you on. Um, as always, we're going to look at the cash flow of a business. Is it a major chain? Is it a minor chain? Do you have a history in operating these kinds of businesses? Is this your third or fourth hotel? Or uh, a conversation I had in Orange County a couple of months ago, um, a uh, developer came to me and said, I have the opportunity to build 120 uh, senior units, senior living units in a certain town. I'm like, fantastic, wonderful, great opportunity. We'll check out the new market tax credit. How many projects of 120 units have you done in the past? And he says, oh, none. This will be my biggest one. So what was your biggest one prior to this? He said, eight units. And I said, you're doing eight units and you want to jump up to 120. So let's have a conversation about that with your SBDC to say, you know, it's just not a question. It's like a, a recipe. You don't just double, triple, quadruple. There's other issues along the way. So that that opened up an opportunity for us to have a discussion. So there's other things we'd like to talk about to you, uh, to talk with you about before we get into that deal. So Bruno, a little follow up on that. Um, in addition to in addition to hotel motels type properties, lodging properties. Are there uh, any other limitations you might have with any franchises? Realistically, no. The, the, the franchise question really comes down to what is what is the business owner's experience with uh, the industry itself? And then we really start to look at projections and uh, current cash flow from other businesses. So, uh, you know, the one fun thing about a CDFI is we do work on projections at times. Um, we did a deal recently uh, for a nonprofit school that was tripling in size. They were buying another building. They were going to be able to support three times the student volume they have today. Of course, looking at the last 10 years in business, they had the regular size and we worked off of projections with that. So I, you know, I, I would say, you know, this is the part of where we merge technology and people together to figure out, you know, is there cash flow? Is there coverage? Um, and you know, what is the uh, the business expertise behind the deal? Great. Well, what products work best for those that may have credit issues? So, uh, I would I find out. Well, my first question is, well, you know, what kind of credit issues is it? Uh, past due? Is it a tax lien? For example, if you have a tax lien, but you have an approved payment plan that is documented and you're working with it, CDFIs can work with that. If you have uh, if you have credit issues due to a recent divorce, great. Let's hear what the story is and see what these issues are. If you have just credit issues due to medical expenses, things like that, um, I I have not heard a lot of great stories about some of these credit repair agencies. I, I don't I don't not you know think they do a great job. I just I've never heard of you know a lot of good experiences, but there are other organizations, especially on the nonprofit side, that offer micro loans or micro grants to help the business contain the cash flow and keep you going while the credit is getting better. And looking at the type of credit issues that you have is just a question of again delinquencies that we clean up and over time uh, get better, or is it you know you're not revolving? Because the problem that I see a lot of times is you're a small business owner, you've got a lot of great ideas, and you go. And you, and what are you doing? You're funding your business on the back of a credit card, and the credit card doesn't revolve. And by it not revolving, uh, your credit score is dropping. Yet you're using that as your primary source of short-term capital, which it really shouldn't be. So we have to figure out a way to back out of that type of financing to back into more traditional business financing. So that's where I think an SBDC really comes in handy to say, all right, what are the different options that are available? There's a lot of there's a lot of businesses out there that are very quick to give you money quickly. And, you know, that's great, but please be aware of what is the true cost of borrowing? The faster you get the money, what is that true cost of borrowing? And how quickly can that turn over? Because then at some point, you know, you're paying them more than you're paying yourself. Great. Hey, next question. Are there any special programs for U.S. military veterans? Yes, that there's a number of programs that are available both for veterans, uh, people of color, yeah. the Asian community, 
Uh, you know, we, we have a special program with the U.S. Black Chamber, uh, Black Chamber of Commerce. Um, so, so there's always a lot of them that are out there. They're always available on our website. And, um, you know, if you go to lendistry.com, you can see what, what is out there. And uh, a lot of the individual support groups or, you know, chambers or other organizations will have different categories of, uh, of different programs that are available to, to meet the need that you fit in. Some of the, uh, when you go through the application process, it'll ask, are you any one of these selected categories? Because then our system goes through and says, oh, you qualify. Just as it identifies, are you in California versus Utah or Arizona to identify that SSBI uh, credit enhancement? Well, I was hoping somebody would ask this question, and they're asking for more information on your purchase order financing product. How can they so, get more information? So you can, you can always go to uh, lendistry.com. That is, you know, again, open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You'll see it under the special program section. Uh, you can always, you know, Uriel or any myself, you can always contact us and we'll get you uh, connected with our experts. Um, in short, the purchase order financing program is typically done between uh, federal, state, or municipal agencies. Occasionally, through a top tier company, uh, we typically advance 20% of the contract. And then again, we amortize it over the window of the contract's delivery time. So, um, you know, again, and the, the final question is, how long have you been doing this? That there's a lot of, a lot of people say, oh, you know, I'm an attorney and I just found this opportunity over here. It's like, okay, hold on. The, uh, you know, that, that's a different risk level than someone that's been doing this for a while. And then all of a sudden your good quality and your good business reputation has opened additional avenues for additional contracts with larger organizations. Okay, well, um, you know, I have a question for you. What is your most popular product? Is it the core business term loan product? The core business term loan is the most popular. The second one is uh, anything SBA related due to the, the rates, the interest rates that are, that are uh, floating around now. SBA products typically can go up to 10 years. Core products, as I mentioned, three to five years. So this is where when you go to lendistry.com, you input your information. Uh, our goal is to be product agnostic. So there are going to be customers that go through lendistry.com and they actually get three offers. And I'll, this will be California only. You'll get a California SSBCI offer under the credit enhancement program that California State has. You might get an SBA offer yeah. that's going to be amortized over 10 years at a certain rate. And you might get a core conventional offer for five years. And there's going to be, as always, you know, you're going to have a monthly no, payment. And whichever is most important for you, is it 10 years at a lower monthly payment? It'd be five years, but you're going to pay a little bit more every single month. And this is where that cost of money conversation comes in, where a lot of our people, um, our CEC, the Customer Experience Center, is open. You can call them. They can walk you through the differences. But, you know, again, what's most important for you and your business? Is it a lower payment over longer term, higher payment, shorter period, things like that? Oh, fantastic stuff. Well, let's jump into, as we're running out of time, let's jump into our webinar chat. And after some greetings, you will see in there the Eastern Sierra Capital Summit, the online registration link and the in-person registration link. Uh, we'll jump also into the information on the Corporate Transparency Act that we discussed. Thank you, Maureen, for putting all this in here. And the uh, our YouTube channel. The Mind Your Business, the Hidden Cash Flow coming up with Cash Flow Mike Milan on June 18th is in there. The Lendistry contact for Uriel, the Vice President, Relationship Manager. There's the contact information for Uriel. And also, yes, this webinar will be available to rewatch a number, a couple of different ways. One, you will be receiving an email. And there will be a recording link in there that you will have in your email box. And also you can go to our YouTube channel, which should be up by this weekend. Uh, the, the email will probably be a couple of days away as well. Um, next is, are you funding a startup management consulting LLC? Um, I'm not. Uh, so that's about the best answer I can give there. 
Okay, so wrapping things up, we are just uh, moving right along. We have webinar number 321 coming up in two weeks on June the 26th, as we have been on this little every other week binge a little bit through the summertime. We'll see you and maybe get back to every week. But right now it's every other Wednesday and June 26th. And also on June 28th would be the Eastern Sierra Capital Summit that's coming up as well. Also, um, that, I think, is going to wrap things up. Bruno, you were fantastic. Oliver, thank you so much for being here. Great products from Lindustry. Uh, any last comments, gentlemen? Uh, from my perspective, thank you very much. You know, uh, to think it's 320 uh, webinars that you've done is outstanding. And congratulations to everyone who participated, invested the time. And uh, Kelly and Maureen, thank you again for hosting and doing such a great job with us. Well, thank you, Bruno. Oliver, you were fantastic as well. Yeah, thank you so much, as Bruno said. Thank you for having us. Um, thank you for allowing me to present to you guys and telling you about Lindustry. Great. Great. Fantastic. And Bruno, we will sit down and have some tell some long tales about Candlestick Park. Trust me, my friend. Okay, that's a wrap for webinar number 321. We'll be back in two weeks. Everybody have a great day and so long, everybody. <laughs>